Hi there, this is Alex from Thingsboard. We are super busy preparing new features. However, pluses of all our novelties we should explain to you as well. So stay in touch with this channel. This time we are talking about the remote platform integrations. Let's review the architecture and use cases of this new feature. As you already know, integrations allow to connect existing NB-IoT, LoRaWAN, Sigfox and other devices with specific payload formats directly to ThingsBoard platform. Just to recollect your knowledge or learn some portion of new info. ThingsBoard integration connects to external system. This can be broker, IoT platform, etc. and subscribes to data feed. Receive data is transformed via user-defined function called data converters. Once converted, data is pushed to ThingsBoard rule engine. It's also possible to push downlink from rule engine to device through the integration. ThingsBoard platform supports two deployment options for the integration. Embedded integration is running in the main ThingsBoard server process. It's a part of a monolithic deployment scenario. This diagram explains the fashion. What's good about it? That would be simple deployment of new integrations and minimum latency for processing the messages. What's not so pleasant? The low level of the isolation and sharing resources, network connections, OS threads and CPU between integrations and the other things both services. And one more bottleneck is inability to connect to external system from a local network of a customer. If the integration and ThingsBoard service is deployed in the cloud. So, ThingsBoard instance deployed in the cloud is not able to access, for example, to OPC UA server deployed on customer's premises somewhere at the manufacturing site. This problem is solved. Remote integration becomes available since ThingsBoard Professional Edition version 2.4.1. It enables new deployment scenario. One can install remote integration in the local network and stream data to the cloud. Let's assume you have a local MQTT broker or OPC UA server deployed on premises. These brokers and or servers don't have dedicated external IP address which means no direct connection with ThingsBoard instance in the cloud. However, you can install remote integration close to broker or OPC UA server in the same local network. This integration will connect to the system, pull the data and store it in the local file system. Remote integration will stream the data to the ThingsBoard instance deployed in the cloud once the internet connection is available. Now a bit of practice. Imagine the local MQTT broker within your corporate network. The IP address of a broker is following. Very many sensors across your factory report data to this broker. The format of the reported data is I want to subscribe to the data feed from these sensors and push them to my ThingsBoard instance in the cloud. As you may notice, the sensor readings are pushed as a text string with the temperature, humidity and current battery level values. Customer decoder function will transform this string to the format that ThingsBoard expects. We also extract sensor name from the topic using this function. I am using Windows 10 with Docker Toolbox installed. We will use Docker to run MQTT integration container. Also, I use Mosquito as our local MQTT broker. I can easily subscribe to the topic via Mosquito sub and push some messages on behalf of device via Mosquito pub command from command line. Finally, we need an account on cloud.thingsboard.io. If you don't have it yet, please sign up. I'm going to navigate to Cloud Instance and create an uplink data converter. I've already prepared the data converter function for this case. 
we'll review this code later in the video. You can find the source code of the converter in the video description. Don't forget to enable debug mode in your data converter. Now let's create an integration. It's important to enable debug mode and execute remotely. Now I'm going to copy-paste the remote integration credentials. I've copied them to a safe place and will use it during the remote integration installation. Now I install remote integration using Docker. Navigate to the documentation page and copy-paste the command Replace the routing key and secret. I can see that the integration is started. This is great. Now we try to post a message to the local MQTT broker on behalf of the device. As you see, the message is consumed by my integration. Now it's time to step backward and learn more about our converter. Open the converter function and review it. The converter is quite simple and it just extracts the device name from the topic and transforms the incoming message to the valid JSON structure. Our pseudo device is provisioned by the integration, check it out! Go to default device group, all, here it is. Open telemetry tab to see device data, the data from the sensor present in ThinBoard. Let's push one more message to see the real-time updates. So, we've just learned how to use remote MQTT integration to receive uplink messages from devices. Pushing downlink messages is absolutely the same in both embedded and remote integrations and it's been already explained in one of our previous videos. The link to the video is available in the video description. Talk to you soon!